This video will be a tutorial on creating devices in DTM, including creating single devices, creating multiple devices, and importing an entire 61850 substation. This is the screen you'll see when you first launch DTM. It is a blank workspace with the DTM homepage shown. The DTM homepage allows for quick loading of workspaces. You can either launch the load workspace window, import a workspace, or load one of our mini sample workspaces. You also have quick access to your favorited workspaces or recently opened ones. You can also jump straight to the Help Center, which include links for instructional videos, resources such as technical support requests, and documents like the user manual. You always have access to the Start page by going to Views, Start page. To add a device to this empty workspace, you'll right-click on New Workspace, Manage, Add, and from here, we can pick what you'd like to add. We have DNP3, ICCP or TASI2, IEC 6870, 101, and 104, 61850, and Modbus. You can also add test manager nodes for automated testing, or folders for organizing your workspace. Each protocol can be broken down into their different types. For DNP, we have master and outstation. Let's start with an outstation. This is the device configuration window for a DNP3 outstation. On the first tab, device, we will have the name of the device and where you want the device to be simulated. If you have multiple computers in your DTM network, you can select any computer in your network to simulate this device on. The second tab, Channel, is where the connection information is configured. Because we have a DNP3 outstation, we have automatically filled in this configuration tab with the DNP3 outstation's default configuration. This includes behavior and port number. You can select a connection type, serial, TCP IP, or TCP IP and UDP. Today we'll be using the default, TCP IP. Since TCP IP was selected, we will need a local address, remote address, and port. By clicking the local address dropdown, you can select any IP address the selected computer has. 0.0.0.0, .0 will use any possible IPs. You can also type in manually the remote IP address or leave it as star dot star dot star dot star, which will allow anyone to connect to this outstation. The port number 20,000 is used by default in DNP3, but you're free to change it, especially if your DTM network does not have many unique IP addresses. The next tab is the Sessions tab. From here, you can configure protocol-specific connection information. For DNP3, you can configure source and destination addresses, unsolicited messages, or enable secure authentication. The database tab can be used to configure the specific database of the simulated DNP outstation. By default, we've included a database that includes a wide array of different types of data, but if you'd like to edit this, you can. You can reset the database to remove all points, and then add points as you desire. Each point can be configured further based on your protocol-specific requirements. For example, this binary inputs class can be configured here. Once you've built up a database you are interested in, you can then export that database to a CSV file. When creating future devices, you can import this CSV file to automatically build up your custom database. The last configuration tab we'll be looking at is the Advanced tab. This is the area where you can really drill down into the configuration options of specific devices. An example of this would be configuration parameters for DNP3 authority. For most tests, I can keep these to defaults. The final tab is the multiple devices tab. Here we can create multiple devices based on the configuration in the previous tabs. This is especially helpful when you're trying to do a load test and quickly need a large number of devices. Once you click create multiple outstations radio button, you'll see that a single device is created in the table below. From here, you can just click the up arrow to create more, or you can type in a number. By default, we change the port number to prevent duplicate connection configurations, but you can still manually go in and change the connection configuration as you need. Now that we're done configuring, we can just hit OK. Now you'll see the workspace has been populated with the devices we created. We can follow the same steps to create master partners for each of these outstations.
DMP3, Modbus, and 6870, 101, and 104 are all created using the same process. Following these steps will allow you to simulate any of these type of devices. Next, we'll be going over how to create 61850 devices. Following the same steps as before, we'll go to Manage, Add, 61850, Servers. 61850 uses configuration files that we can import directly into DTM to simulate those devices. DTM supports many forms of these configuration files, including ICD, CID, SCD, and many more file types. You can do this by clicking the SCL file icon and clicking Import Configuration. From here, just navigate to your file, select it, and hit Open. Now that that file has been imported, you can click OK. You will see that all of the configuration options are now filled in. If your SCL file is an SCD file or contains multiple IDs, you can click this drop-down to select which IED you would like to load. You can also go and change from the default IP address found in the file to something that is on your computer. If your device needs Goose, you can select the Goose adapter here. You can also add IP addresses to your network adapters, but that will be shown in a different video. The Advanced tab is similar to the one shown in DNP. This is where protocol-specific configurations are updated. This is also where you'll find sampled values adapters if your device needs to have access to sampled values. The last tab is the same as DNP, multiple devices. From here, you can create multiple instances of the device configured, but I'll just create one. Following the steps as before, we can create the 61850 client. Since we've already imported the SCD file, we will not have to import it. Just click the SCL file icon and select the file. Hit OK. Again, we'll need to select the proper IED to load and give it the right IP address. If you did not have the SCL file to configure your client, you could always click Use Discovery and the 61850 client would discover the model based on the server's configuration. If we were to create multiple 61850 clients, you could go to the Multiple Device tab. This is slightly different than what we've seen before. In 61850, you can create multiple clients to connect to one server, or you can create a client based on a server configuration found in the imported SEL files. Since I imported an SCD file, you'll see the configuration for any device founded in my SCD file. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm only going to create the one that I already have selected. The last thing we're going to talk about today is import substation. SCD files are substation configuration files. You may want to simulate an entire substation, but you may not want to go through the previous process multiple times. This is where our import substation tool comes in. To access import substation, you'll go to File, Import Substation. Again, we'll want to select my SCD file and hit OK. This is our Import Substation tool. There are three modes you can run in this. The first mode is SCL File Restrict. In this mode, you are tied to exactly what the SCD file defines. This includes IP address, subnet masks, and port numbers. This mode is used to verify everything that you have is properly configured. The second mode is user defined. In this mode, you'll have a full range of editing configuration options. This will allow you to tweak connection options freely to quickly configure devices for your computer. The last mode is loopback addressing. This mode is the quickest way to get from nothing to a full simulated substation. Every device in your substation will be assigned an IP address in loopback addressing. This means devices outside of your computer will not have access to this simulated substation, but you'll be able to connect to everything locally. After you're done configuring your devices, you can either click Import All or drag devices independently. For more information on DTM or to start your eval of the application, check out the links in the description below. Thanks for watching.